Okay, well, welcome everyone. Uh, wow, so LA, Idaho, Iowa, New Jersey, Buffalo, Chicago, Connecticut, in the house. I like it. Um, oh, that's fantastic. Welcome everyone. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. <gasps> Portugal, okay, Brazil, by the way. So um, Patricia will talk at some point. Love it. Okay, thank you for joining us today and welcome to the last session of our fall webinar series using resources from the News Literacy Project. I'm Miriam Ramez, NLP Senior Manager of Educator Engagement and I'm part of our News Literacy Educator Network. Uh, I'm new to the network itself, but some of you might know me already if you've ever attended a News Lit Camp. I used to work with the education team um, producing the News Lit Camp events. Um, to those of you that I have not yet met or are new to the News Literacy Project, I welcome you. You are now part of the family. Um, I'm joined today by a few of my amazing colleagues, Jordan Mays, our Senior Manager of Educator Network Operations um, and AKA Checkology Expert Goddess. Um, and also Pam Brunskill, Senior Manager of Education and Content, who works a lot on uh, the SIFT and other content that we're gonna be going over today. So we're gonna be combining forces as we guide you through NLP's free resources and dive into how you can actually apply these into your teaching. Um, so we really appreciate you being here because educators, you are the ones on the front lines in the fight against misinformation. And I'm sure you're thinking, wouldn't it be nice if misinformation simply went away? So of course, who wouldn't? Uh, we know it sometimes feels like you can't get away from it no matter where you turn. It could be in the classroom, in the lunch line. It's on every digital platform you might be on and sometimes even with family and friends. So the volume of information and the velocity it keeps coming at us, um, it just, it makes it harder, right? It just keeps growing and that's unlikely to change. But what can change is how we approach, how we approach it. Um, John Silva, our Senior Director of Education and Training often references a study conducted by SHEG. Um, SHEG is the Stanford History Education Group that 96% of high school students didn't challenge the credibility of an unreliable source. Um, those are kind of scary statistics. And then over 50% incorrectly classified the evidence presented as strong. Um, so those are big numbers. And if you feel that NLP's mission is urgent, we kind of agree. As a nonpartisan education nonprofit, we create the resources and provide the programs for you to teach, learn, and also share the abilities um, needed to become active consumers of news. Um, and part of our vision even is to have 25% of high school students having learned something about news literacy before they graduate. Our goal is to do that, to accomplish that 25% within the next five years. Um, also part of our vision is that people of all ages and backgrounds know how to identify credible news and other information um, so they can have an equal opportunity to participate in the civic life of their communities and country. So we all want a magic wand that would elevate the understanding and thoughtful critical critical thinking in that regard, right? That'd be awesome. But the closest we can get to that magic wand is to keep doing what we do at the moment. So we're gonna keep giving you free resources. We're gonna keep providing tangible support from a team of obsessive network nerds, news literacy focused folks, um, AKA our staff. All right, nerds, I might just be talking about myself, but um, maybe Jordan. Um, and we're going to be offering frequent learning opportunities so you can hone your skills, right? This is going to help us reach the goal of embedding news literacy in the American educational experience, right? So part of this magic wand is uh, we're going to start with Newslet Nation. So Newslet Nation is the official home for our community, which includes over 42,000 teachers and librarians, right? You are part of that magic. Um, you can go ahead and register at newslet.org, right up on the right-hand side. 
and then you can become part of the professional learning movement, right, which spans across all 50 states. And, um, oh, another proud nerd, I like it. Um, spans across 50 states and other countries as well. Portugal, welcome. Um, it, the purpose of this is because we wanna mobilize and connect teachers, librarians, and school administrators across the country. It's a way for you to find local opportunities for partnerships. You can build channels of communication for your communities at the local level. You're also gonna be able to find uh, others that are advocating for a news literacy curriculum. Um, here is where we can be each other's source of inspiration and strength and resilience. So um, I hope you join there. And if you take a look on the right-hand side, we have an announcement section. Uh, that area is where we're gonna feature things that, are, that might be too good to wait until the next monthly newsletter, um, which is the Newslet Nation Insider, by the way. Um, there you might see things like an uh, announcement about our monthly giveaway, um, a latest awesome discount for educators, perks, um, or an early bird registration opportunity before uh, it goes public. Um, from there uh, on the platform, you can also share your ideas in the forum. So I wanna definitely highlight the forum here because it gives us a chance to brainstorm projects you can get feedback on something you're working on. You can even peek at each other's lesson plans because you can upload documents to it. So the forum is going to be a way for us to dissolve the geographic boundaries that keep us working in silos, right? 42,000 educators as part of this, it's helpful if we talk to each other. Um, and then that way we feel less alone in doing the work. So tap the brain trust. Um, in here, we also have uh, an announcement for something new, which is our Newslet Nation giveaways. Uh, we're going to do something different every month. So for September, uh, because we know start of the school year can be a little tricky, sometimes stressful, we're going to just offer sign up, make a post, and uh, ask a burning question, whatever it is you decide this post to be, and we're gonna randomly select uh, somebody to win a gift bag with some of our best swag to help ease you into the year. So um, you're very welcome. A <laughs> uh, Couple of comments in the chat about that. So uh, it is our way of giving back to you guys because we you know you give so much. So make your entry. It could be commenting on somebody else's post. It could be posting a question. It could be, I'm brainstorming this idea, upload a PDF, get some feedback, see what you think. Um, and we're gonna announce it here on, uh, on that same post that uh, Jordan thankfully is showing. So, um, and every month it'll be something different. It might be books, it might be various things for a giveaway. So, uh, all right, so we wanna encourage everyone to start uh, thought partnering, but also not only do you have access to our staff and each other, you also have our news literacy ambassadors. So if we head back out to the navigation, click on ambassadors, these are experienced educators in the field across the country who uh, either are educators or education policy makers in key cities. They're very familiar with our programs and resources and they're news literacy champions that you can tap, right? So if you're in any, in any of those regions, uh, please feel free to reach out to them. Their contact information is right there on the website, right? They're gonna help identify, uh, they help us as well, identify unique needs of local school districts. Um, let's say you want a presenter for your district or even your state conference, or you would love to co-present something. Um, you're looking to create an event, tap our ambassadors. That's what they're there for. Um, they are collectively going to be creating 26 events across the country this year. And I am sure if you're interested in having them host something for you, they would love to hear from you. Um, so this is part of how we create this movement, right? It's a movement building model. It's designed around hub cities to mobilize news literacy advocates 
so that we can affect meaningful systemic change. And it's one of the ways we can intentionally grow this community so that it's diverse, it's inclusive, it's committed to supporting each other across the country, and especially those in under-resourced communities that can flourish with access and resources and uh, this kind of support. So News Lit Nation is gonna give us a chance to do much more than just kind of shake our fist at the internet. Um, it makes sure that we always have each other. So, um, and if there are any news literacy nerds out there listening in the cities um, of Pittsburgh, Denver, Bay Area, somewhere in Iowa and in Texas, um, please note that we have, uh, we're accepting applications through Sunday to become an ambassador. So uh, details are right there on the website below. So. Um, one of the things I also want to mention about the giveaway, if I can go back to that for a second, because I know I mentioned prizes and whatnot. Um, we are going to uh, give a prize to somebody who's going to post share, but I understand because I'm, I'm a bit of an introvert myself and sometimes I'm like, oh, do I want to post something? So our introverts don't feel left out. We're also gonna send a gift to the first five educators that create a login tonight. Now, don't run and do this right now, stay here with us. But um, at any point tonight, the first five folks that create a login on Newslet Nation, we're gonna send a little special gift. So, all right, thank you. All right, so let's move down the nav. We'll go to events. And in this section, uh, you're gonna be able to peruse what we have that's coming up. You're going to be able to access details and the registration links for it. So obviously today, our last session using resources from NLP, October 28th is going to be um, a really fantastic event. So go ahead and click on those details, learn more, sign up. What is not listed on here yet is we have several News Lit Camp events coming up in November. Um, and as soon as we have those, uh, the registration details, um, I can go ahead and share them with you. That said, since I'm teasing it, um, we're looking for November at a Newslet camp for Detroit, another one for the Metro Atlanta area, and another one for the San Francisco Bay area. So if you're in any of those regions, November is going to be a month that you are going to enjoy. And yes, there are going to be virtual. Um, Newslet camps are usually, well, pre-pandemic times, they were in person. And we really do hope that uh, we can get to that safe space again and hold them in person. But at the moment, they will be, they will be virtual. Um, so thank you for asking that question. All right, so if we go ahead and move on, the next section is educator tools, which is really what you're here for tonight. And uh, I'm gonna toss this over to Jordan to uh, pick up and carry on. Excellent, thank you, Miriam. Uh, Pam and I are so excited to talk about NLP's tools that are available for you today. Great, Jordan. I, <laughs> sorry, what was that? Oh, I missed her. Um, but we're really excited to talk to you about these educator tools that are available for you. Uh, you have access to every NLP educator tool from newslet.org. So I'm going to go back to the main page to show you how to get here. From newslet.org, click on for educators, which will bring you to Newslet Nation. And then on the left hand side, click on educator tools. And you'll see that all of the teal ones here are for the classroom. So today, Pam and I are gonna focus on the three that are on the top, uh, which I know I've seen some active users uh, here in the chat for the Checkology Virtual Classroom. Uh, we'll also talk about our resources library uh, and we'll start with speaking about the SIFT. And the way that we'll frame our conversation today uh, is based on this chart, which just gives a short overview of each resource and some learning environments in which it tends to be used. Uh, some of the types of activities that you'll see contained in this resource and you'll see that there are some highlighted items. These highlighted items tend to take one or more class periods to use with students, as well as some examples of some news literacy skills that are aligned with some activities in each resource. So I'm gonna put a link to this in the chat. This is a copy link. 
So if you click this link, it'll create a version for you that you can use to take notes off of. And this can be an optional guide for our conversation today. So I'm gonna to toggle back to Newslet Nation and click into the SIFT. And when you click explore, you will see the SIFT archives listed below and an option to subscribe. I'm gonna click into the most recent, recent issue of the SIFT to show you what it looks like when it comes to your inbox. It comes to your inbox most every Monday in the school year. And it consists of a variety of different sections that are consistent throughout the school year uh, and some links to some other cool things that are going on at NLP. So while I switch this over to Pam to talk about the SIFT, um, I wanted to ask everyone who's here if you've used the SIFT before uh, to share with, with us in the chat an example of how you've used these resources in class. So again, if you've used the SIFT, how have you used it in class before? Sorry, my, my mute button wasn't unmuting. <laughs> so, there we are, we can hear you. Good, all right. And let's share this. Oh, I'm in the wrong, wrong button. All right, so um, Jordan showed everyone right now just how the SIF looks when it comes into your inbox and online. And I broke it up into some slides because it's just hard to see um, items when you are, you know, um, presenting. So it's just the SIFT, but it broken up into a smaller section. I'm Pam Brunskill, Senior Manager of Education and Content, and one of the creators of the SIFT, or one of the writers for the SIFT. And what is the SIFT? The SIFT is NLP's free weekly newsletter for educator educators and it's delivered during the school year um, on Mondays, whenever there's not a holiday. We uh, explore timely examples of misinformation, address media and press freedom topics and discuss social media trends and issues. With everything else teachers have to do, it's really hard to, to find the time to keep up with all these changes in today's information environment, which is the most dynamic, fastest moving in history. So the SIFT gives teachers a fighting chance against this tide of information. Uh, we include exemplary or instructive pieces of journalism, viral rumors, social media policies and research, public opinion and news media or information literacy research and so on. The goal is to give you a, a concise digest of timely news, uh, of relevant news literacy news. Uh, we give you examples and ideas for classroom integration each week. It's like a slow drip of professional learning. You can use the SIFT for bell ringers or those do now activities, for when you're studying current events, for developing discussion skills, practicing analyzing evidence. And I think Miriam already addressed this, we're working on higher level thinking skills, such as a thoughtful critique, which is a generic skill, of course, you can transfer to all disciplines. Ultimately, this is authentic real world applications of the many skills and concepts you teach kids in, in all your classes. We organize it into three different parts, top picks, viral rumor rundown, and kickers. Um, and as uh, Jordan said, we are always looking to hear from educators. So if there's anyone who uses the SIFT, please um, share in the chat different ways you use it. And we'd love to hear from you. If there's ever anything you have suggestions, we wanna hear that as well. All right, so what is what are top picks? This is the concise roadmap of the week's biggest news literacy topics. Here's the very first one from this, this week's uh, issue where we focused on um, the Facebook files by the Wall Street Journal. It was a series of five phenomenal articles all dealing with um, how, how Facebook uh, intera and interacts with, with society and, and all the effects of, of their algorithms. We um, also include related articles. Some of them are gonna be related directly to the Facebook files and some of them are gonna be related directly or to the content expressed in the Facebook files. Within these, these topics, you will also see ideas on how to use these, these articles in your classrooms. So here we have um, an idea from a computer scientist at Indiana University to spark discussion among students about Facebook's effort to reduce political content on its platform and how social media algorithms often prioritize content 
that gets reshares, reactions, and comments. And so we, we offer these um, discussion prompts. What kinds of posts tend to become most prominent? Why? And what are the effects of this? For those of you who are um, veteran sifters, you'll, you'll notice there's a new resource this year called Dig Deeper. And it's a think sheet to guide students through a close reading um, of one of the aspects of, of the sift. This particular week, we, we linked to the, uh, the column, the Menser's um, column, and we explore cognitive biases like the bandwagon effect and popularity bias and how um, we can reduce the quality of information shared, how they can reduce the quality of information shared on social platforms and fuel polarization and anger. When you click on the link, you'll get to see this hyperdoc. Um, and I purposely create it as a hyperdoc so teachers can take as is, they can print it out and, and students can just write on it or else they can make a copy themselves and, and then you know edit it if there's a section you wanna add or change the questions to better meet your students' needs. It's all there. Um, and it's a, a think sheet, which is an evidence-based handout that uses writing to improve reading comprehension. It transforms content into new knowledge and makes the thinking visible. Basically, we're scaffolding reading of um, an understanding of at least one aspect of the SIFT with this new, new um, addition to the SIFT. So you can see we follow the same format for topic pick number two. And then if we have resources that fit, we will add them. So introduction to algorithms is one of our checkology lessons, and then how to teach news literacy in polarizing times. Um, and you can see, you know, that relates to the, the new report for NYU, yeah! <laughs> the report from NYU um, that says that social media platforms are not the primary cause of these growing political polarization, but they do intensify and exacerbate these divides. So how can we teach that? And then, you know, here's our third uh, item in our, our top pick, which is about fact checking. And once again, we include our um, discussion questions for you. So section two is probably our most popular. It's super fun. Um, this is the viral rundown rumor. It walks through clear fact checks that debunk recent misinformation. And this is great to use with kids because you can put up the picture and just say, hey, is this real? Right, and they have to try to figure it out and they practice the skills that they, they learn about with news literacy, whether it's lateral reading, whether it's reverse image search to try to figure out if an image is real, right? So here's this one where there was an image posted, I think it was on, uh, on social media was posted. This is where we're at and it hurts. And it's a picture of a guy holding up a sign saying, I know more than the scientists. And he misspelled scientists on purpose because it's not actually an anti-vax protester. He didn't create a sign saying he knows more than the scientists. It's a parody. Um, and when we get to this viral run, the VRR, the viral rundown rumor, um, we explain, right? We take the, um, the image and explain what happened, right? So no, this man is not an anti-vaccine protester. No, the sign he's holding doesn't contain a seer message. Yes, he is a counter protester. It's a it's satire. And we get into the news literacy takeaway, the teaching point, satire, satire is notoriously difficult to recognize online. And we get into fact checking. So some of the skills um, they would have to do would be lateral reading and reverse image to quelch this rumor. And you could practice with them. And we have videos, tutorials on how to do both skills uh, in, on our website. Again, we repeat this, this formula with other viral rumors, such as one on ivermectin and one on Chris Evans' t-shirt where he said, keep Trump America Trumpless, but that's actually a doctored image. Uh, it's not, um, it's manipulated content. The original image had a um, state of Oregon, right? So they get practice and it's super fun. And I see a bunch of messages popping up in the chat. So let me just open that and see, it looks like people are talking about think sheets. Oh, I have a great um, description of think sheet. I can, um, anyhow, for those of you who wanna learn more about think sheet, it's Carol Sue Engler, Taffy Raphael and Jim Collins. For those of you who are, I saw there were a couple of you who are nerdies, like all, <laughs> like all of us. Uh, you might want to search them up because they, they're the ones who are, are the big researchers on thing sheets. We do have a question in the Q&A if I can interrupt you, Pam. Oh, yeah. 
Right. Uh, Jim so, has asked if there's a way to have the first slide and then label it in a second slide that would keep the class guessing and talking about it. And I wondered if now would be a good time to talk about the new format of the viral rumor rundown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is what we're working on. I, I think we're going to have it ready for next week, crossing fingers. So next Monday, check your inboxes. The goal is to have some sort of slide so that it won't be just clear because we don't want anyone copying and pasting a bad image, right? But it will have some sort of... Um, What's that called? A overlay so that um, you know it'll say the sift or something on it, so that it's not clear if it's real or not, but that you won't actually get the the, the bad image. And then in the next slide, yes, it will tell you what it that it what, that it was a doctored image or or whatever it was and why, or just it, it'll just have the images for our, our viral rundown numbers. So yes, that is coming. Good, great question. Um, okay, and that brings us to our third and final section of the SIFT, which is kickers, also new this year. Kickers is journalism slang. It's the ending of a story or news report, often intended to leave a lasting impression. And um, sorry, I, I know I'm going back and forth. This section um, closes each issue with an engaging collection of links to news literacy relevant stories, studies, and commentary. And that's what it will look like. You can see in this week's um, issue some really great other articles that we don't give um, teaching ideas, but you might want to explore with your kids. So data suggesting that um, these current events, these polarizing current events may have um, boosted our understanding of basic civic concepts, but at what cost? And then this one's really sad. A new CNN poll finds that more than half of Americans feel democracy is under attack, right? So there are all these additional news literacy um, articles or, or something to, to look at and explore with your kids. And again, it's created by Peter Adams, Hannah Covington, and myself, and edited by Mary Kane. If you want to subscribe, if you don't already, please, um, please do. And I'm going to stop sharing and send it back to Jordan. Miriam, I know there was a question at some point for you too about the, um, the SHEG, the SHEG document. I think Beth, that is the art. I think that is the article. I've read it too. There was one in 2016 and one in 2019. I think those are the dates. I and will I'm pretty drop sure. It. Yeah, yeah. I'll drop it in the chat. Perfect. And I will mute myself and let Jordan take over. Awesome. Thank you, Pam. Um, so that's in general what you'll find in the SIFT every week. Um, I'm going to toggle back to this uh, framework from before. So again, we see that uh, we've got recent fact check examples and discussion prompts, uh, as well as deep dives into current issues in journalism and the news media landscape. So if you're already teaching a topic that can relate to news literacy, like bias, um, or like the primary purpose of a piece of information, uh, one quick trick that I like to do in my inbox or in the archives of the SIFT is just to do a control F and find that term somewhere in the SIFT so that I can find if there's anything in that week's issue that could relate to what I'm doing in students, uh, doing with students in class that week. So if I do control F for bias, I can immediately see what the current issue is related to news literacy and bias, uh, and then maybe get a discussion prompt or even a classroom ready resource that I can use with students as soon as that very day. So please go ahead and subscribe to the SIFT, it's awesome. Um, to check out the rest of the classroom ready resources, I'm, or yeah, sorry, classroom ready resources, I'm gonna head back to the for educators tab. This is Newslet Nation. I'm going to click into Educator Tools. And then I'll click into the Resource Library. And the Resource Library is primarily meant to provide you with in-class uh, group activities, shareables, and quizzes that you can use with students. So if you would like to teach uh, a news literacy lesson, but you don't necessarily want to use the full functionality of the Checkology Virtual Classroom, or if there's just a one day lesson that you'd like to do, uh, if there's maybe something you'd like to share on social media with students or give to students to share with their communities, the resource library is a great place to start. Uh, I can use the options on the top to find the grade levels that I'm working with. And I can use the types of resources here to browse. I can even save some of these resources. And then once the, uh, I start saving resources, they'll populate here and I can email them to myself. And if I click around here, I can see the different types of resources that are available. And each one has a pretty extensive description associated with it. So under classroom activities, I'll see these group activities uh, that are great for use in the classroom. And you could probably make this work in a remote and hybrid environment as well with breakout rooms. One of my favorites is called Fact Check It. 
In fact, check it, students learn a digital verification skill. Uh, and then with the jigsaw method, they become an expert in that digital verification skill, and then they join a group and they teach others about that digital verification skill. So you'll see a detailed overview of the classroom activity and you'll be linked to the PDF of the activity itself. And you'll see the type of information that we provide for you here. Got key terms, essential questions, materials needed, the duration and suggested grade levels, and even some suggestions for preparing for the lesson in advance. So here are some detailed instructions, a printable worksheet for students, and an answer key for you. So in addition to these classroom activities, you can find quizzes and posters and things that you can hang in the classroom to kind of serve as reinforcements for what you might be teaching on Techology, uh, maybe from a SIFT deep dive or maybe in a lesson that you've designed on your own related to news literacy. So I'm gonna pause and see if there are any questions in the chat and Q&A about this resources library before we head to Checkology. All right, it looks like nothing yet, but feel free to interrupt me with any questions that come up. So I'll click back into Educator Tools and I will click into Checkology, which will open the Checkology Virtual Classroom in a new tab. Uh, Checkology is an e-learning platform that has been around since 2016 and it is fully free. You can create as many student accounts as you'd like, as many classes as you'd like, and then you can assign each of those classes a customized news literacy course. And you can change that course throughout the school year for students. When students go through their coursework, uh, they can either complete it in their student accounts at home or with you live in the classroom, and they submit their assignments to you for your evaluation. So you can see a quick overview of the 14 core news literacy lessons that are available on Checkology by clicking the Start Learning tab here on the top right. And then when you click into a lesson, you'll get a lesson preview, information about the duration, uh, the difficulty level, and the name of the lesson host. Uh, but you should go ahead after previewing one or two lessons and create your Techology account because it's totally free and simple. To create your teacher account, you'll just click register now here and then register under educators. Then you'll join your school, link your email address and you're good to go. So I'm gonna switch to a new tab. This is what your Techology teacher account is going to look like as soon as you create the account and log in. From the dashboard, I'll see that I have the option to add classes. I can scroll down and see some of the additional features available on Checkology. And I can head to the content tab. And this is where I'd like to focus a little bit today. This is where you can find a list of all of the assignments that are available to you to assign to students on Checkology. So I'd like to hop into the understanding bias lesson. I know that some of you were on the bias webinar recently with Peter. And the types and forms of bias that Peter was talking about uh, can be found in this lesson. And this lesson takes a similar format to most of the other 14 lessons in that it has a subject matter expert as a host. That person provides video instruction for students. It takes them through a series of really engaging and short videos with motion graphics, uh, different types of assessments and activities, and then students submit their work at the end. So let's take a look at video one of understanding bias. I'll turn on the captions. According to a Gallup poll, almost half of all Americans say they see a great deal of bias in the news media. What about you? Have there been times when you felt that a piece of news was biased in one way or another? Or maybe you thought a topic you feel strongly about was misrepresented. Maybe you even felt that a story was biased in the way it presented young people. But what exactly is news media bias? How do our own biases affect our perception of everything we read, watch, and hear? What are some different types of bias? And what are the ways they occur? And who even gets to decide if something is biased? Today, I'm here to guide you through this Checkology lesson. We're filming at the Museum, a museum in Washington, D.C. dedicated to increasing public understanding of the vital role of a free press in a healthy democracy. We'll explore the questions I just raised and others as we try to better understand the complex subject of news media bias. So as you can see, this is pretty comprehensive. This is an introduction to the general landscape. Um, and this lesson uh, is 32 elements long here, as you can see on the bottom. Uh, and it's really meant to be used as a standalone lesson instruction or to be blended uh, with a full lesson that you're already planning on using on news media bias. 
Uh, here, because this is a teacher account, you can see the results from a student poll. Students and their student accounts will vote in this poll. So they have an opportunity to exercise student voice straight away in the lesson. So Indira goes on to talk about the difference between news versus opinion. And then students are presented with their first assessment, uh, which is identifying an article that is straight news. And here, like elsewhere on Checkology, we have uh, real world examples from news organizations, from social media, uh, from user generated forums. On this element, you'll see examples from news organizations. So students are to read these pieces and make a determination about which of them is straight news. So I'll click select here. And then the student is presented with pretty customized feedback on what they got right or what they got wrong here. If they get the uh, response wrong, then they're prompted to use a retry uh, and to try to get the answer correctly again. So let's check out one more video in understanding bias. And then I'll show you what some of the assessments look like and we'll hop back to the Techology Teacher Dashboard. So what methods do journalists use to minimize bias in their reporting? The vast majority of journalists who produce straight news work really hard to keep bias out of their coverage. They strive to set aside their own feelings about a subject and let the facts stand for themselves. Responsible, reputable journalists follow standards and ethics policies that help guide their process. Those standards include getting information from multiple credible sources and presenting the facts in a way that makes their meaning clear, fair, and accurate. Responsible journalists give subjects a chance to respond to allegations against them, and they gather information in a legal and ethical manner. Uh, many, many hours of seeking comment from every source in this thing. They follow guidelines to ensure that their language, photos, and videos don't include inadvertent judgments or opinions and don't harm or misrepresent subjects of a story by taking their words or actions out of context. The principles in the Society of Professional Journalists Code of Ethics are to seek the truth and report it, to minimize harm, to act independently, free from influence of money, corporations, and political or other interests, and to be accountable and transparent to their sources and to the public. One responsibility of the editors who oversee reporters is to look for signs of bias when they review a story, an image, or a video, and to root it out before publication. But reporters and editors are also human, which means they have blind spots. This makes sense because we all have a unique set of life experiences made up of our upbringing, education, socioeconomic experience, and other factors such as race, ethnicity, and gender. All of these contribute to how we look at and understand the world. How about you as a news consumer? Your life experiences affect your perception of everything you read, watch, and hear, including your perception of bias in news. So in short, we all view the world through our own unique lenses. Sometimes our unique lens causes us to jump to conclusions, miss important details, or impose our own bias on the news. Next, we'll examine five types of bias that can result from these factors. So just watching that video, I was reminded of all of the connections that news literacy has to so many other subject areas um, and ju just important things that in our in our personal lives. So just watching that video, I could see how this lesson could be brought in obviously to a journalism class when she references the standards of quality journalism and ethics. Um, I also saw how understanding bias could be brought into an ELA class when talking about tone, which gets its own dedicated video later on in the lesson. Uh, as well as in a history or a social studies class uh, when talking about examining historical sources. So uh, one could use this lesson in conjunction with examining texts from a particular time period to talk about the types of bias that might be present and the forms that that may take. Uh, so next in the lesson, students take a look at five short videos about different types of news media bias. And then they see some hypothetical scenarios um, and they're asked to identify what type of bias might be present in the hypothetical scenario. Then students see a video talking about different forms of news media bias, so ways that bias might manifest itself. And then they see these same scenarios, but repeated, and they're asked to identify the form of bias that's present here. And we know that this might be a lot of vocabulary for students, a lot of new concepts, 
so to assist them and to assist you, we've created a word wall here on the bottom right hand side. And this word wall contains new vocabulary and concepts from the lesson. And you can use this as a standalone in your teacher account as well. Uh, both students and teachers have the word wall on the top menu in their account. So if you'd like to go in and create some sort of extra uh, flashcards or another type of activity based on the vocabulary, that's a popular thing to do. I think if you search some online uh, flashcard, re flashcard repositories, you'll see a lot for Checkology, especially for info zones and some for understanding bias. So when students get to the end of this lesson, they click the submit button and their work is recorded and sent to your teacher account so you can see how they did on these auto graded assessments. And if there are any open ended questions or uh, paragraphs, you have the opportunity to evaluate the work that they have done in the core lesson. So I'm going to exit the understanding bias lesson, check out the chat and Q&A, see, see if anything has popped up. All right, it looks like there's a question from Beth. I signed up my students for Checkology, but have not assigned the lessons to students yet. Because it's self-paced, do you offer a summative assessment of some kind? And how do you suggest teachers enhance the lessons provided? Do you suggest any context or background knowledge before students begin the lesson? I haven't used these lessons before, so I'm not sure of my role in conjunction with what is offered. That is an awesome question, and it brings us perfectly to the next part of this presentation. Um, so I, I think the short answer here is uh, however is most appropriate for your students in terms of their grade level and the subject that you teach is the correct amount of context that you should provide to them. Uh, but it's pretty difficult to make that determination just with this list of lessons. Uh, so here in the content tab, you'll see the 14 core lessons under learn, extension activities. So ways that you can practice, for example, those types and forms of bias again listed here and some fact checking missions here on the bottom. In order to learn more about what's under learn and practice and extend, uh, what you'll want to do is check out the comprehensive lesson guides that are available. Um, sorry, that's my dog in the background. There's some activity going on. Um, so to access, the, access those comprehensive lesson guides, you'll click the help button on the bottom right, and then you'll click on lesson guides. And this will be the resource that you'll want to use, Beth, when you're preparing to use these lessons with students. So you'll see the titles of the lessons here. I'll find understanding bias. And then I'll have a lot of resources available for me here related to the understanding bias lesson. I have that direct link to preview the lesson. I have a link to the lesson overview. This includes the estimated student time on platform, the number of assessments, state standards, learning objectives, essential questions, and more. And there's even a text only version of the lesson here by clicking on the full lesson guide. And here you'll see exactly what's said in videos, a summary of that, uh, text of the poll, and answers to assessments. So I recommend checking out these comprehensive lesson guides in advance of using these core lessons with students. Great, thanks Beth. All right, I'm gonna take one moment to grab my dog, one second, uh, and I'll be right back to show you how to set up a class on Checkology. These are the things that happen in a Zoom webinar. Pets, children, all sorts of uncertainties. I'm sure everybody has like a story of what's happened in the past year. There we go. This is special her. guest. Sorry about that. Special everybody. guest. <laughs> special guest appearance. Indeed. All right. So in order to set up a class, um, you know, if you've taken time to explore those comprehensive lesson guides. Or if you already know, you know, I'd like to assign my students a default news literacy course and just have them get going with Checkology immediately, then what you need to do is set up a class. So we'll just do a really quick overview of how to do that. So from your teacher dashboard, click the add class button. You'll just give your class a title. So I'll say social studies, typing with one hand, high school, 11th grade, and the other social science. The main class setting you'll want to know about here is the course lock. And like all class settings, you can turn this on and off throughout your Techology usage. So if you decide that you want your students to access their news literacy course in chronological order, then you'll have that course lock on. And if you'd like them to be able to click start next to any news literacy assignment, that'll be off. So I'll turn that off and create the class. Now to have students join your class, all you need to do is copy the class join code to the clipboard. 
and when you send that to students, they'll automatically be joined to your class once they link either their first name and last name or an email address, a Google account or a Microsoft account uh, to the account itself. So after you've sent students that class join link, then comes the fun part of assigning a course. So this is where you have to make determinations about what sorts of news literacy content you want students to see. Uh, if you're up for something quick and simple, if you'd like students to have a comprehensive news literacy experience, we recommend assigning them the default course. This one is default for high school. Uh, you can learn more about this default course and the types of assignment, assignments it contains by clicking preview course, or you can just go ahead and assign it to your class. Uh, but if you'd like to customize the course or change it, you're welcome to do that. So I'm gonna click change course. And when I scroll all the way to the bottom, I have the option to build my own course. I'll call this one social studies as well. And this is really where making the most of Checkology comes into play. So if you're working with students uh, who don't have much of a basis in news literacy topics, and you'd like to use Checkology to really establish a baseline for them, then we recommend that you would use a lot of these core news literacy lessons here under learn. So I would bring understanding bias over here and I would allow those supplemental activities to populate. So I could assign them those exercises that go with understanding bias as well. And I would bring over info zones. Those are four supplemental activities that go with info zones. And there's really no limit to the length of course that I can assign to students and the amount of times that I can rearrange or remove content from that course while students are using it. But let's say you've already got your own lesson or your own curriculum about one of these topics. You don't need to ass assign a full news literacy lesson at all. You don't need to assign them a long course. You can really pick and choose what you'd like to use with students. So let's say I've already developed my own unit on misinformation. Um, I can just take some exercises related to, mis to misinformation and assign them to students on their own here in the course. And this will prompt me to add the lesson if I want to, but I can select no. So I can even just assign the students, of course, with two short activities, and that's just fine. Um, so really, Checkology is super flexible for whatever you think is important to assign to students. And you can find a list of everything that's available here in the content tab. And again, to learn more about those 14 core lessons, you'll want to access those comprehensive lesson guides, which you can find here in the Help button and into Lesson Guides. Uh, I know I re went really quickly on the class creation process. Uh, we've got an awesome help center with in-depth guides that you can access here. You can also take a tour of your account with a video here. And then uh, here's an overview of setting up your first class, which is what we just did together. I do have a couple more features that I'd like to show off about Checkology, but I'm gonna check the chat first to make sure nothing else has come up question-wise. Nancy really mentioned that setting up, oh, sorry. I was going to say, there really is so much good stuff, and I know we tend to go quickly, so just a reminder to folks that this is recorded and it'll be available, so you can always like go back and rewatch it later if you wanted to, you know, catch something. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Miriam. Yeah, Heather was uh, adding some context about how they um, did a lesson together in class before uh, send, sending their students off to complete lessons on their own so that they could get used to how Checkology works. I don't think I was explicit about this, but when we were going through the understanding bias lesson, the way that this appears in this teacher account right now is almost exactly the same as it's going to appear for a student account. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, uh, Heather also mentioned adding an in-class support teacher as a student. Um, you can add as many student accounts as you'd like to so that folks can preview the student experience. I also wanted to point out the co-teacher function. So if you're working with colleagues or if you're a library media specialist and you're setting up courses for everybody in the building, which we've found is a more and more common way to implement Checkology, you can add co-teachers. And in order to do that, you'll click edit on your class settings. You'll open your advanced settings. And here under co-teachers, you'll see a list of everybody else who's registered for a Checkology account in your building. So if you don't see the person you're looking for, you'll just need to instruct your colleague to create a Checkology account on checkology.org. And then their name should appear here in the co-teachers list so they can have access to that student work as well. All right, not seeing any more questions so far, feel free to pop them in. Uh, and in the meantime, I wanted to explore the journalist directory with you. Especially this time of year, this is an awesome opportunity to bring in expertise to your classroom um, and to have someone else there to help you answer questions 
about a specific topic in news literacy or about journalism in general. In this directory, you'll find over 100 vetted journalists who are super excited for the opportunity to speak to you and your students on a variety of news literacy topics. You might need some help narrowing this list down. Uh, you can search by the zip code of the journalist to find somebody who might be near you or who has expertise near you. And you can filter by area of expertise here on the top right hand menu. So it follows off an election season. Uh, you can find someone who covers local politics, who covers national politics. Misinformation, always an extremely important topic. Uh, even sports reporting, you know, if you have students who are interested in sports reporting and you'd like to bring things home with something that's uh, of interest to students, you can select that. And then when you click go, you'll see a list of everybody who has selected one of those areas of expertise. So I'll enter someone's profile. I can check out their work experience, those areas of expertise one more time and take a look at their work. I see that they're generally willing to do in-person classroom connections within 35 miles of this zip code. And then if I decide to, I can invite them uh, to have a conversation with me and my students. Here, I would just enter uh, some details about what I'd like to discuss with them, give some suggestions for some days and times that work well for me. And I'll just make sure that this email address is one that I can check because uh, then the journalist and I will continue our conversation via email and we'll set up the uh, conversation independently of Checkology just using some kind of video conferencing service. So uh, the system, the Checkology system will check in with you after a couple of weeks to see if the classroom connection went well or if you need more time for the classroom connection to happen. So that's the journalist directory. It might seem a little bit intimidating to reach out to somebody uh, without much support, but we are here to support you in this. We want as many people as possible to connect with journalists this school year. So you can always just email us and let us know that you need help, um, or you can head to the resources section. And in the resources section, you're going to see a newsroom to classroom tab. That's the name of the program that the journalist directory is part of. Here, you'll see a link to an overview of the newsroom to classroom program a step-by-step -step guide to getting that um, connection set up. And then you'll see a planning sheet. Uh, this is a Google Doc that you can use with the journalists to collaborate and prepare for your session with them. Uh, and I just wanted to remind you that everything that you're seeing today, including this, is completely free. So you can reach out to as many journalists as you'd like to this school year, and we encourage you to do that. Um, and adding as many classes and students as you need to on the platform is totally free. All right, so we've gone over setting up a class on Checkology. We briefly went over the content that's available and how to find more information about it. We also checked out the journalist directory, which we'd love for you to use this school year. Um, and finally, I'd like to point you to the Check Center. The Check Center is a fact-checking toolbox um, and kind of like a widget that you can use either on your own or with students. You can ask students to use it on their own. Uh, to develop the habits of mind that you need to fact check a piece of information. So here under the quick check, you click get started and you'll see that you're prompted to check a piece of information. So something that you find online. Um, so let's say I'm on Reddit and I see uh, just a text post from somebody, somebody writing a couple of paragraphs that makes a claim. Uh, what I would do is I'd click text claim only I would give this quick check a name. Uh, I'd link to the URL so I could reference it. And then after that, I'd be asked a series of questions to help me get to the bottom of whether that piece of information is true. So first I'd be asked whether the claim is even checkable or not. Um, then I would be asked where I found it. Was it from a standards-based news organization or was it on a user-generated forum? And when I select that it's from a user-generated forum, I'll be asked to check out the comments and see if anyone else has disproved it. Um, so while using this quick check widget is not going to guarantee you that something is true or false, uh, what it does is it helps us build the habits of mind to make those determinations on our own. So that's the quick check area. And the toolbox contains uh, tutorials that give us information about ways that we can make researching online easier, as well as digital verification or fact checking easier. Uh, and these can be used in conjunction with a variety of activities on Checkology, but namely those fact checking missions that we really briefly went over in the content tab. So under tips, you'll see things like control F, which I did earlier on that SIFT page uh, to help us find a word or a phrase on a web page. If you click play here, you'll get a little um, narrated video that shows you why you'd want to use control F and how to do it. And here under skills, you'll get much more detailed information about different digital verification skills. So our most recent one is called how to search like a pro. 
This one is hosted with expert Cindy Otis, uh, who's a disinformation expert. And she gives us an introduction to why we'd need to search like a pro. In the second video, she shows us a piece of information that we're going to dig deeper into by searching Google like a pro. And then here you'll see that we have a ton of different skills that we can use to enhance our Google search. Um, so click each of these icons. And then you'll have Cindy guide you through doing that specific thing on Google uh, so that you can get to the bottom of a specific question that you might have. And in this case, it's a question about the social media post that she mentioned in this previous video. On the right hand side, you'll have access to a toolbox. And in this case, the main tool is a standard Google search. So you can click that and open it in another tab. So that's a really brief overview of the Check Center. I know that was very fast. Again, um, you can find more information about the Check Center as usual in that resources tab up here, as well as by clicking that help button and by heading to our help center where you'll find an overview and you'll be able to get in touch with us to ask any specific questions you might have. So I know I just overloaded you with a lot of information about Checkology. Um, I'm gonna head here to the sheet and I'll send another uh, version of that link in the chat. But again, um, if you're looking for full activities um, with full instruction on news literacy concepts, as well as the ability to reinforce those activities, you have access to um, machines for students. All students need is uh, an up-to-date browser and a device that will allow you to listen to and stream video. Then we recommend using the Checkology Virtual Classroom. If you're looking for bell ringers, um, really up-to-date uh, pieces of information and viral rumors, we recommend checking out the SIFT. And if you're looking for group activities and shareables, we recommend starting with the Educator Resources Library. Uh, but if you have any questions about anything you saw today, or if you just need help kind of getting started, please reach, reach out to us directly, or even better, go ahead and post in that Newslet Nation forum so that not only the whole NLP team can see it, um, your peers across the world can see it and chime in with any best practices. And I will turn it back to Miriam. Awesome, thank you so much, Jordan. Um, this was fantastic. And I know, we know it's a little bit of a fire hose of knowledge brain dump. Um, so rest assured, this is gonna be recorded. It's gonna be posted. Um, so you can always go back and refer to it. And the great thing is that our team is always available to you, right? So all it takes is checking in at the help center. If somebody is like kind of stuck, um, we're here literally to support you. So, um, and I'm sure somebody will drop in the, an, an email as well um, if they need to reach, um, if they have questions about Checkology. So I just want to remind everybody, so a couple of things, a few closing remarks, I will make it very brief. Um, we do have a survey and the surveys are so important because um, the only way we're able to offer all of these and support you um, at no cost is thanks to our funders and your feedback is really critical. Like, how did this go? Do, were you able to get enough information? Do you feel confident enough to like move forward with this information or do you need more because then we'll create more so um liz is going to drop in uh the survey link right here it's very brief it's not going to take more than three minutes so i hope you have a chance uh, a couple of other comments is the ambassador deadline is this sunday so I'll go ahead and drop the link in here. Um, and that was the specific cities I mentioned earlier, Pittsburgh, Denver. It's on the link, so please help yourselves. Um, Newslet camps coming up in November. So if you're in Detroit, Metro Atlanta, or the Bay Area, stay tuned. Go back to uh, Newslet Nation to see when those dates are announced or sign up so that then you can receive the insider newsletter. Um, and then, yeah, lastly, register for Newslet Nation, right? Go to newslet.org and click on the four educators and that'll, that'll uh, guide you to it. And introduce yourself in the welcome post. So if you're new to this, right, this is a great way to find out like, okay, who else is around? Is there somebody in my area? What else is happening? So. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. It is really our honor to join hands so we, that, that we can support you um, and support each other in nurturing a growing generation of news literate students. So thank you so much all for coming. 
Um, we can stay on a couple minutes in case anybody has questions, but I think overall we're, we're pretty good, right? A great start to the weekend. Thank you, Teresa. This is great. Uh, Patricia, wonderful. Like I love the comments all popping up. Um, for those of you that haven't watched this live but are watching it later, um, please know that we're here for you. All it takes is like an email or, um, or a post in the forum and we're paying attention. So um, thank you everyone. Any other closing remarks? Jordan, Pam, Liz, who's hiding behind the NLP Ed Team logo. Happy weekend, everyone. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you for coming. We appreciate you.